covalent compounds. Covalent bonds and covalent compounds is the focus on today's lesson. Covalent bonds are bonds that are formed between two or more non-metals. Okay, so we're looking at now the right of the aluminum staircase. Now, metals are not involved at all with a covalent bond. Okay, non-metals in a covalent bond share their electrons until they achieve that stable octet. Okay, or they pretty much achieve the octet rule. Identify whether the following compounds are ionic, polyatomic, or covalent. So, so far, up until now, we have looked at binary ionic, we've looked at polyatomic compounds, uh, transition metals, okay? So we're pretty much looking at the very first premise when it came time to name compounds, and that was to identify metal or non-metal. So let's look at this first compound here. ALBR3. First thing you want to do is identify metal, non-metal first. And we happen to have that. Aluminum is a metal. Bromine is the non-metal. Okay, so therefore we have an ionic compound. Let's look at the next one. NaNO3. Identify again, metal, non-metal. Na is a metal. NO3 is a non-metal. And if we notice this non-metal, it's uh, nitrate. So therefore, okay, two non-metals mean that the two non-metals represent a polyatomic compound. Next example, CO2. So the first and foremost step was to identify metal, non-metal. But when you do try to identify metal, non-metal, you'll notice that, well, O2 is a non-metal, but so is carbon. So here we have two non-metals. There is no metal, so therefore we have a covalent bond that is formed, and we have pretty much a covalent compound. And the next example here, we have CH4. Again, identify metal, non-metal first, and while well, we have a non-metal, and we're gonna treat the hydrogen also as a non-metal. So if a non-metal appears first, it's covalent and the non-metal here is carbon and then even though hydrogen we find it over on the metal side we don't treat hydrogen as a metal okay we will be treating it as if it's a non-metal in bonds so hydrogen always bonds as a covalent bond with non-metals even though it's on the side of the metals now, when naming covalent bonds, we use prefixes to show the number of each type of atom in the formula. So here are the prefixes. One for mono, two for di, three for tri, tetra for four, penta for five, hexa for six, hepta for seven, octa for eight, nona for nine, and deca for 10. Now, Here's an important note. If there is only one of the first elements, the prefix mono is omitted. So we're not going to use mono with this, mono that, and, um, as you'll probably come across the occasional time that we'll use it. We're not really going to use it. But for, uh, for you to know, if you do see it, you do use mono um, at some occasions. And we'll see that uh, as some of the worksheets I'll be handing out. So let's look at the uh, first one, CF4. Remember that the second element has an IDE ending. So in other words, this should be some kind of a carbon fluoride. Remember that the second of the two non-metals has the IDE ending, okay? But we have to keep in mind, we have to list all the elements. Well, we have here, so when we're gonna do the steps for CF4, we're going to identify metal, non-metal. Both are non-metal. We're going to write out the element name so we know we have carbon and we have fluoride. Remember, IDE ending. Okay, an IDE ending for the second element in the, uh, the compound. Now, how many of each one do we have? So count how many of each element we have. Well, how many carbons do we have? Well, we have one carbon and we have four fluorides. 
So how do we put it together? Well, according to the prefixes, okay, we want to use the prefixes at the beginning. Okay, obviously it's prefix at the beginning to represent how many of each one. So normally we would say for one, we know it's mono, but we're not going to write mono. We're just going to keep it as carbon. And notice we have four, okay, we have four fluorides. So the prefix for four is tetra, and we put it at the beginning. So there's four fluorides, so it's tetrafluoride. So the name of this compound is carbon tetrafluoride. N2F2. Now, normally in the ionic compounds, we would be simplifying something as follows. N2F2. But in covalent compounds, okay, let me just write it in red. There's no simplifying. There is no simplifying. So we keep it as N2F2. Remember, no simplifying covalent. Okay, so let's go through the steps. Identify metal, non-metal. And of course, before you did that, you'd before we know that we can't simplify, we'd have to be able to identify that they're both non-metal. We're going to write out the element names. First one is nitrogen. The second one is fluoride. Remember, I-D-E ending for the second element. Okay, how many of each one? So we're going to count them. We have two nitrogen. Okay, two nitrogen. And we have two fluoride. So think about the names now that are used for those compounds. We have... According to the prefixes, the two nitrogen, two fluoride are represented as dinitrogen, difluoride. PCL5. So let's go through the steps. First thing, we're going to identify metal, non-metal. And we don't have a metal and all metal. We have both our non-metals. We're going to write out the element names. P is phosphorus, Cl is chloride. So Phosphorus chloride. Okay, how many of each one do we have? We have one phosphorus. We have five chloride. So using the prefixes, because phosphorus is already just a one, we just keep phosphorus. And instead of five chloride, we use the word pentachloride. Now examples, N2O5, N2O4. Here are a couple of examples that you might come across. Notice the bottom one, N2O4. Normally we would simplify it, but because we said covalent, you do not simplify. Okay, because they're both non-metals. So we have here what we call dinitrogen pentaoxide, dinitrogen tetraoxide. But be careful with naming these, okay, especially when using penta or tetra in front of oxide. One thing to keep in mind that when using the prefix tetra and penta in front of oxide, drop the letter A from the prefix. So we're no longer using those A's. So the name is no longer dinitrogen pentaoxide or dinitrogen tetraoxide. It's dinitrogen pentoxide without the A and dinitrogen tetroxide without the A's. 